Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the Find Your Model Health podcast. The podcast for those looking to optimize their long-term health and weight goals and understand how their body works. I am your host, I am Shemaine Linney and I'm a biohacker, iridologist and fitness and nutrition expert. I'm very happy to have you back with me on this September afternoon and I hope you're all keeping really well. Can you believe that September 2020 is almost over? It's crazy. It seems like the last few months have just been consumed with everything COVID and now we're transitioning from a season of COVID into fall. So as we move into fall, let's keep learning as we go on and trying to optimize our health as best as possible because if COVID has taught us anything is that we do not know what is around the next corner. So this week's episode is a topic near and dear to my heart in that um, my sister has experienced issues with endometriosis and I have a lot of clients that have experienced this condition too and it's popped up a couple of times over the last few weeks and sometimes it's easier than me constantly repeating myself to people with the same question to just answer that question in a podcast so then everyone can listen to it. So in this week like I just said we're looking at endometriosis and I have done a lot of episodes on how female hormones can affect us from how our menstrual cycle runs to how we lose weight across the month. So there's a lot to do with these female hormones, but this topic is a big one. So we're going to jump into it after I remind you that the information in these podcasts is for informational purposes only and not to be taken as medical advice. Please consult your health practitioner before making any lifestyle changes. So endometriosis, what is endometriosis? Well, endometriosis is a condition where we get an accumulation of endometrial tissue somewhere in the body. So that could be in the uterus or it could be somewhere totally different. So really you can get a buildup of endometrial tissue anywhere in the body and lucky for those men it only affects us women and is associated with the body producing too much of the female hormone estrogen or estrogen depending on what part of the world you're from so as we move to our monthly cycle or our menstrual cycle we build up this endometrial tissue this tissue acts as a bed or it's supposed to act as a bed or cushioning in the uterus for when the egg is fertilized. So the fertilized egg then nests in the endometrial tissue and grows for nine months. Now if the egg does not get fertilized, you will then shed that endometrial tissue from the uterus. So basically this is your period. Endometrial tissue is your period. But what happens in endometriosis is there's just so much estrogen and it makes endometrial tissue, it throws off your menstruation and it also contributes to PMS changes like those sore breasts, migraines, cravings, irritability. It's also that hormone that causes those blood clots, um, all that horrible menstrual cycle stuff that women with imbalanced hormones can experience all generally comes back to that excess estrogen. So in this condition, you have so much estrogen floating around your body that you, if it seems like you're constantly stuck making a period. You're in this cycle and you're making this period in weird locations too, which then causes a lot of pain. So not just pain in the uterus, but around the body. So instead of having a week long period, relatively symptom free like many of us, because it, it's not normal to have a painful period. It's normal to have 
an easy symptom free period. So instead of having that, these poor women experience horrific pain and symptoms. And then when they're not having a bleed per se, they're suffering from estrogen dominant symptoms still, like migraines, pain, um, you can't see clotting, and not just period pain either, but you can get pain in the gut, in the lower back, in the joints, all over the place. Then when, again, the period arrives or the bleed arrives, um, these women get those very heavy, clotty, painful periods. So for some women, they can feel like they're just stuck in one big, long, menstrual, horrible cycle of pain. Not every woman will get endometriosis. It does vary. Genetics can play a part. Uh, lifestyle can play a part. So that's why you, you may say, well, I have all of these symptoms, but I don't have endometriosis. And yeah, that's very possible. Many women do have the symptoms, but don't get endo endometriosis. It really depends on the body's abilities to convert hormones and detoxify and metabolize and all that sort of stuff. But for those women that do get endometriosis, this is what you are experiencing and my heart does go out to you. And that's exactly what this is though it's a vicious cycle but once we can understand what's going on we can go about breaking the cycle and making women's lives a lot easier so nowadays it's believed that estrogen dominance happens from not only the body creating too much estrogen but also having a problem detoxifying this estrogen which is what we would consider a bad or a toxic form of estradiol so that's a very strong form of estrogen sometimes you might hear it referenced to as 16 alpha hydroxy estrone but really that 16 alpha is a metabolite that you'd see further down the line as the estrogen gets metabolized into different forms. But um, although we have been treating endometriosis directly at the side of the uterus for the last 40 years, we are now understanding that the problem begins with the hormonal imbalance. And if we fix that, we don't necessarily need to go back to that old school laparoscopy or worse, that full hysterectomy. So there are other options. Approximately one third of all the people or the women that go in for laparoscopy that's that keyhole surgery is to remove endometrial scar tissue and what does a surgery like this cause it causes scar tissue and then the scar tissue clogs up the tubes and the joints and the blood vessels and it also triggers an, uh, an immune response to constantly be trying to clean up that scar tissue which then this constant immune response contributes to autoimmunity then we see infertility and you can see this vicious cycle now gets worse and bigger and i'm sure several of you are cringing right now so Again, the body is making so much estrogen and that's that strong estrogen, the estradiol, and it's accumulating. And either your body can't detoxify it or it's just not managing to clear it away fast enough or effectively before the body makes more. And then the body becomes this one big estrogen pool. And wherever we see active estrogen is hanging around in the body, it'll make some capillary rich endometrial tissue. So that's blood dense growing endometrial tissue. And it attaches that tissue to that part of the body with collagen and connective tissue. Then as you move through your monthly cycle, your hormones drop and to allow the endometrial tissue to shed. But if you have too much tissue or endometrial tissue in other parts of your body, this is going to cause a lot of the pain. 
because your body is trying to clear up that endometrial tissue. So normally, if that's happening in the uterus, it'll just fall out and you will have your period. But if this is happening in, say, your legs or your knees or even in your bells, then your immune system has to go and try eat up all this tissue and try clear it away. And then that creates more scar tissue. And the more all of this happens, the worse your symptoms and endometriosis gets. And we see that there is a direct connection to the autoimmune attacks, the gut health, and the endometriosis. They're all connected based on that immune response that I mentioned earlier. So you can see that this vicious cycle then evolves into another nightmare, which is inflammation. So we've got inflammation, we've got then autoimmunity, and we can even see a connection to lupus and thyroid disorders with this. And then we see aromatase happening. This is where we see testosterone being converted into estrogen. So you're just constantly making more and more estrogen from wherever you can. So basically, we see endometriosis comes from estrogen dominance, which is directly linked to inflammation. Inflammation, as we know, can be drove up by many things. I've discussed it lots in the past in pretty much every podcast and lots of posts. And then estrogen dominance is directly linked to other hormonal imbalances, including low progesterone and insulin resistance. So we know inflammation and insulin resistance go hand in hand. But when we look at progesterone, this is why progesterone gets prescribed as a cream or say a bioidentical hormone or something. But then there is a caveat to that too. And that some people can be resistant to progesterone. Just like you can be resistant to insulin. So that cream or that bioidentical hormone may not help at all. So interesting interestingly if you've got low progesterone activity and high estrogen then i know and i know this sounds like just one big long nightmare but this is what's happening if you've got low estrogen or low progesterone and high estrogen the amount of stress that adds to your central nervous system and your immune system and then of course your adrenal glands that's all going to cause adrenal exhaustion. And again, our vicious cycle gets even bigger. Now we've got more problems. We've got a bigger vicious cycle and we need to figure out how can we stop all of this. We know when we see the adrenal exhaustion, this leads to fatigue, insomnia, a weakened immune system and other health issues. Um, if you have adrenal exhaustion, the likelihood of you getting to the gym or getting out and exercising or choosing good nutritious foods, they're slim. So like for women, this can be a big hole of hell. So when we look at solutions though, we can't just talk about all the negatives. I suppose we've got to give you some actionable items. When we look at solutions, part of the solution is upregulating progesterone. And then we downregulate inflammation and we reduce estrogen. So how do we upregulate progesterone? We can do that with Vitex. We can do it with some other things like chrysin or wild yam. We can also do it with some foodstuffs and some other supplements. And then when we look at downregulating inflammation and reducing estrogen, we would do these through nutrition fat loss because we know that fat cells are endocrine or hormones or organs in themselves so they fat cells create estrogen they also create inflammatory cytokines so inflammatory hormones so fat loss nutrition some supplements some exercise and some other stuff we also can't forget about detoxification and digestive systems they're not the same but they are intertwined 
Um, so once we break down those inflammatory hormones and the cells and the estrogen, we have to remove them from the body. So we need to be pooping and peeing regularly because they're our main detoxification pathways along with having a period. So we obviously detox a lot of hormones when we have a period. This is why having a good period is so important. We also need to be supporting the liver and the kidneys and the lungs because although it, we don't detoxify many hormones per se from the lungs, we do remove excess carbon and we can remove some toxins through our breath. Um, we also don't want to be adding to our body's toxic load either. So we got to watch for those pesticides, the heavy metals, other toxins and chemicals, and of course, inflammatory foods, especially your trans fats. Like that's a huge one because trans fats are probably the top contributor to inflammation. So then when you, you do all that and you want to then also focus on your immediate pain and your scar tissue and the symptoms now, we need to get rid of the clotting and the scar tissue and the immune response or at least bring them down. And this will also help with the fertility. If fertility is an issue, which it can be for endometriosis sufferers. So here we look at magnesium and omegas for the pain, turmeric too. And then we could look at some good enzymes for scar tissue. We can look at proteolytic enzymes that are known to um, help clean up damaged proteins in the body. Systemic enzymes too. One thing that I notice many people forget is water. I remember when I was in Weight Watchers like many moons ago, if you plateaued, your leader would tell you to increase your water and the weight would move like magic. And you'd hear this story from other members that when they increase their water or their weight would start dropping again or I know why the scales didn't move because I didn't drink enough water. And why is this? Water is not a magic fat burner. It's definitely not. And I still see this with my own clients. They'll say, I know I didn't drink enough water. Probably you didn't. But why does water make such a difference? It's because if we are breaking down all these hormones and chemicals and toxins, they have to be removed out of the body. And they will bind to water and water will help carry them out. So you see that with how often you pee. This is why I tell my clients to stop complaining about pee. Because peeing is one of the best things that you can do for your bladder. To keep it clear of toxins. To keep removing them and detoxifying. Water is very important. We also lose water through our breath and through our sweat. Which again is detoxification. So when we don't have have enough water we're not removing as many toxins so they can get recirculated and stored in the body and this is why you might see like if you go to weigh in oh I had a great week except for my water is because you didn't remove a lot of the toxins they recirculated in your body they drove up inflammation then as well and this then of course is going to impact the scales and as contrary as it may seem when we don't drink enough water, we actually hold on to fluid. So we get fluid retention because, again, all these hormones and toxins are being retained in the body. They'll drive up inflammation. They'll cause bloating, fluid retention, swelling, all that lovely stuff. Your body can make metabolic water when it needs to, but it'll also pull water out of foods and wherever else it can get it. But that's why water is so important and clean water too, especially if you're trying to fix something, say like endometriosis and you're detoxifying a lot of hormones and toxins. Like I said, you don't want to be adding to that toxic load. So you don't want to be drinking water or anything that has pesticides or BPA or other 
plastic residue or anything like that in it, even hormones, some water will have runoff of medication and hormones in it, depending on the sourcing. And you don't want to be drinking that and adding to the problem. So you want really clean water there. And it's important. The more you pee, the more you flush out. Stop complaining about it. It's good for you. So that's pretty much endometriosis summed up. So we see we've got that estrogen dominance. We've got the estrogen dominance causing endometrial tissue to be formed in excess either in the uterus or around the body. Then when the hormones drop, we see we get all of the pains associated with endometriosis and all that other horrible stuff and the inflammation. And if we can bring down the inflammation and we can bring down the estrogen and we can bring up the progesterone and then support our digestive and detoxification pathways, we have a good base there for helping reverse this condition. And it can be reversed, it most definitely can. So all is not lost. Now I really hope you found this podcast episode helpful. If you have any questions at all, reach out to me on Facebook or Instagram on my website. Just look for Shemaine's Model Health on social media and then my website is shemainesmodelhealth.com. Super easy and there's a contact me button at the top of that page. And I'll keep an eye out for any questions. Please, please share with anyone you feel that this may help. We know, we all know at least one person that suffers with endometriosis. So let's help them by giving them this bit of knowledge that I feel is gonna be simple enough for them to understand and take action. Help me to help you to help others. That's what we're all about. We wanna help as many people as we can. Let's make people a little bit healthier in the easiest ways possible. And if you feel I deserve it, I would really appreciate if you could leave me a review on whatever your podcast player is. It helps me reach more people, but it also lets me know like that I'm actually doing a good job and helping people and I'm not just putting out content that's wasting people's time. So yeah, that would be great. Otherwise... Have a great week. Get some fresh air because it's it's perfect walking weather right now. Uh, Stay safe and I will chat to you guys soon. Bye-bye.